Greetings, everybody. Uh, today, we're very welcome with a very special show, special guest. We need to start talking about solutions. Right now, everybody's dealing with the inconveniences, the fear, the uncertainty of our current well, world. And after we get over this, things aren't going to be the same. We're not going to be the same. So the best defense is an offense. And what's the best offense that we have in our arsenal at each and every one of us have at our disposal? I mean, our bodies are key, but what is equipped in our bodies? What's commanding all of these different functionality, these organisms, these, these, this, this technology, and it's our mind? our brain. And so we're dealing with 10% of our brain and the other 90% are subconscious. Man, outside forces are utilizing our subconscious for their best interest. We're not using our subconscious for our best interest because we don't understand how to access it. So today, I'm welcomed by a very special guest, Mr. J. Abdul Thomas from Mentality.Buzz. How you doing, Mr. Thomas? Pleasure, Michael. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming. So um, tell us a little bit about all the things you know that you do, because you're, you have multi-talents here. I, I recognize you from Total Package Energy, uh, the, the product that I use to get me through the day and to give me that focus. But that's how I discovered you here. And then by talking to you, I realized that you go deep into the game in so many different levels. So first of all, tell us about all your background and, and how do we get here or how did you get here to mentality.biz? Um, well, it has been a journey uh, of enjoyment, keeping it mental as young as I can remember. My aunts, when I asked what type of child I was, said, you were a child that asked too many questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I was putting the mosaic together of uh, in particular and myself in general. Uh, my father was a doctor in the 60s mm -hmm. and at that time, there was some pushback of having skilled as he was, black hands going into bodies of different colors in America. So he repackaged himself and became uh, one of the first black psychiatrists uh, in the 60s. Wow. My and dad so, was a psychiatrist too. My man. So we grew, we have, uh, we kindred spirits as we grew up in the house of therapists. And in the process, my father basically kind of jam-packed information into me that probably more than I'll ever use in a lifetime. So... Uh, Unwillingly, of course. <laughs> yes, literally. And, and, you know, I look back now, he's since passed, but I look back now and just marvel at how many of the things that I can draw on that uh, my father left me not from a conscious perspective, but a subconscious perspective. Yeah. So he knew exactly where to strategically place that information for me to be able to uh, store and retrieve it when needed and necessary. Wow. Uh, so, somewhere down the line, I worked for a nuclear pharmaceutical company, um, and it was minority owned and, a, and the nuclear owner- Nuclear pharmaceutical company. Nuclear pharmaceutical, of all things, uh, uh, public safety and the owner was overweight and he had went to some individuals that worked with him on a mental and subconscious level to en enable him to uh, break the chains that held him to uh, a state of uh, uh, heavy weight if you would you know morbidly obese uh, more technical and he said man you know you have the type of voice and disposition that I found that this doctor I went to had won't you go see him and see exactly, uh, you know, what what is what 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 you can work with, what what you can take from him. 
And I went there and I stayed uh, for years and years and years with this particular doctor. And um, when I came out, I was one of 20 graduates in over 20 years uh, that had the master's level um, designation in neurolinguistic programming. And um, I had an opportunity to teach a lot of doctors about that particular discipline, even some psychiatrists. Afterwards, I got into human services that really put uh, the human touch into uh, the way that I look at people and then went on to um, a lot of entrepreneurship, the MBA of entrepreneurship, the Doctorate of Business Administration, DBA in entrepreneurship, and kind of stirred up all of these life experiences to uh, come out with a collective that could aid and assist people wherever and whenever needed or necessary. So why don't you break down for the novice, neuralistic, uh Break down how what that word is and how you're applying it. I don't even think I said it correctly. So help, okay. uh, help so, me and help the audience. That's okay. So neural linguistic programming. There we go. Okay. So uh, going uh, taken from the mind and ex- expressing it through the tongue in order to frame it for future, present and future performance. And it's the language what, what, What's of, performing here? Or the mind is performing. Uh, and therefore, the body is responding. So the how body. does the mind perform? Is that our life? Um, the mind performs when it is activated. Uh, you can walk around in a stalemate mentality if you, if, if you are not activating your mind. Uh, the common, one of the common terminologies for it nowadays is vegging out. So it, it, there are individuals in vegetative states by way of circumstance, of heart attacks, strokes, and things of the sort. But there's another vegetative state that individuals find themselves in and where they have elected to not move the mind and just let themselves uh, be, be reactionaries. Be, be non-productive at that. Be non-productive. Get up, eat, and go to sleep. That's it. And so there's a there's no um, moving of the mind. There's no pro. There's no action. Uh, so you know, there's the statement when some people make things happen, others watch things happen, and others don't even know things are happening. So in that regard. Neurolinguistic programming speaks the language of the mind. Now, the mind, as you stated, is broken down into 10% consciousness, that which we use every day, and of some of which we use every day. Let me, uh, let me, you know, uh, be honest with that. And the others are 90% of the subconscious that we don't consciously use. But the subconscious has some very, very unique qualities about it. The maturity level of the subconscious is that of a 10-year-old. Therefore, a lot of times, the things that it imposes on the whole entity, the human being, is more reactionary and of a very, very, um, not, not a high level of maturity. Adolescence. Right. And the subconscious, another thing about the subconscious, it never sleeps. So we could be having a conversation, and, and the neurolinguistic programming and the other techniques that uh, are incorporated into mentality are such that they speak to the subconscious, and thereby, in the process, the whole entity, the mind, the conscious will move out of the way and bring forth, the, you move the mind, the critical factors moved out of the way and bring forth the subconscious. So an individual may fall asleep during a session, a mentality session. And the uncanny thing about it is that speaking to the subconscious, it can be said to it on the count of five, you'll be all the way up, wide awake, eyes wide open. And from a state of sleep, by the time we count from five to one, the individual is wide awake. I've watched people that have had their head cogged back, mouth wide open, snoring, and by the count of one, they wake up totally. 
because the subconscious is being spoken to, and that is one of the ways in which the subconscious leads the rest of the entity, the rest of the human being. So let's talk so, about the power of the subconscious mind, because sure. we all know that we're not using 90% of our capacity, brain capacity, and, and we all know innately that the subconscious mind is powerful, but um, until you truly experience the power of the subconscious mind, um, it, it's all hypothetical. It's a theory. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I know it's cool, but you know, until I actually understand it, 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 it serves no purpose. So uh, let's understand in depth and, and get the audience fully aware of the capacity of this subconscious mind. And I think the best way is let's give examples. And you're thinking with me on that. Uh, the best way I could uh, give a de demonstration of the ability of the subconscious mind is an example for drivers per se. Those that drive will find and can call a time in which they have embarked on a, on a drive and all of a sudden they've reached their destination but don't remember the last five street signals that they pass. Was that light green or was it red? Did I stop or did I keep going? The subconscious, when we drive, oftentimes because it's such a repetitive action, takes over and the conscious is way off somewhere else. Sometimes it's alluded to as being called highway hypnosis. You may see the next light, but not the light right in front of you because your vision as well as your conscious kind of leaves you and you're on autopilot per se. So the first autopilot is the individual that finds themselves behind the wheel of a car uh, and the subconscious basically takes over parts of the drive. And for our listeners, I'm sure some of them can relate to saying, oh yeah, I, I remember doing that. I don't remember those last few blocks. And all of a sudden I was at my destination or even a passenger in a car. They don't have to be asleep, but they are sitting there and all of a sudden the ride is such, it takes away the critical factor and they get there and they've entertained the subconscious coming to the forefront. Okay, so th that's a great example, but I, I don't think we as an audience understand the full power of when the subconscious takes over. So, so I'll give an example. Um, beautiful. And then you can piggyback with another example. Beautiful. This building here has had a lot of conflict, um, a lot of obstacles with personalities, um, um, wanting to utilize this space here. I had a former partner and we got to the opposite ends of the way we see things. Um, he wanted me to buy him out. I gave him an offer. It was a good offer. He said it wasn't enough. So we were at a stalemate and nothing was happening and bills were piling up. And so I had done this breathing exercise, uh, and it was uh, almost um, hyperventilating me, but over a course of time, and the goal was to get me into the, um, the theta state of mind. And I I'm not sure if I got the right state of mind. I know it's the state of mind that one to seven-year-olds live in majority of the time. And that's when they say that, uh, you know, your personality is formed your first seven years. So uh, whatever state of mind that is, uh, I was able to get there breathing. And um, while I was there, I, I, I received an instruction of to do something. And it was to go ahead and buy this particular footage. And, and it told me, don't try to cheapen it. Don't try to get it for a deal. You can probably get it for free. I want you to pay full price. Uh, in fact, maybe go over your full price. And I was so clear with the instructions that I knew without a doubt that if I did this, that it would take care of my partner problems. And so I went ahead and did it and I paid, you know, a nice penny for this licensing the footage. And, um, and then I waited. 
And it was that whole weekend, man. I'm like in this dream state where, where I'm like not really clear on where I am physically. It's like that moment when you wake up and you're really trying to go, okay, where am I? Uh, sure. Am I here in physical reality or am I still at my dream? And you're just trying to like picture and put things together. Well, that's the state I was in this entire weekend. So to summarize it, four or five weeks later, that video came into great cause because my uh, former partner got into a fight with somebody over the video who I paid for because he felt that he should be entitled to it for free. And because I gave it such value, the other guy's like, nah, man, you can't get this for free. So they ended up fighting. They were not relatively in this building, but they were sharing it. And because of that, he picked up his stuff and took and walked away. So... Um, I was able to get what I wanted, which was the entire building to myself. Uh, and I didn't even have to physically even be here. And then that same weekend, when you talk about sleep or driving, I was real tired that Saturday night. And man, I literally fell asleep at the wheel. But I woke up at a park gas in, in a parking lot at a gas station at the little area where you can kind of put your car to the side and I was like whoa how did I get here <laughs> you know I kind of remember you know tuning off falling asleep and then my subconscious just took over and and it got me to where I needed to be safely so those are two examples of the power of like, normally when you have a big obstacle, you want to attack it and deal with it physically. No, I just dealt with it by just doing one thing and everything took care of itself. It was like I, I was in a timeless dimension and it knew, well, this right here is going to spark that. So all you got to do is set the chain of events. Mm -hmm. So that... To me, I realize that the subconscious mind lives in a timeless dimension. Um, it's like a genie. So if you want something to happen in the future, it knows the whole variables of what to do. And it's like, you know, okay, do that. It's kind of like Morpheus when he was leading uh, Neo in the beginning of the film, telling him, oh, duck here. Go out on the ledge here. That same type of relationship. Mm -hmm. And it is in the further recesses of the mind in which a lot of our actions and reactions are set. However, being able to tap into it and make use of it is a whole nother thing. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, but those are great examples you gave there. And sometimes the best reaction is no action at all, which, which leads to another action that is favorable. Yes. Um, they with, call that feminine. <laughs> they call it what? You know, they, they, they people say that's a feminine expression. Oh, well. Where, where you, you, you're doing that. very little, effortless, yeah, no, to achieve no. great amounts of, in this case, a big obstacle. Yeah, well, scientifically, scientifically, um, it's called total abstinence for a positive result. Total, uh, re repeat that again for me, please. Total abstinence for a positive result. <laughs> that sounds and, like and an I, oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, and it really doesn't have a gender, right? But but you know, I, I can see where you know, by extension, in some in some circles, you know, they they would call it would call that. You know, sometimes, um, what's happening in the eye of a hurricane? The eye of the storm is still, right? Yeah. But the rest of it is in full motion, you see? And at the end of the day, the storm settles as the eye had been settled all along. So really, with the subconscious, uh, it can basically take root and work to your favor. It has to have the right input. So mentality uses a, a few uh, techniques to make sure that uh, it has the tools needed to be, 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 be successful. 
mentality is there to bring out the best in you. Okay, um, so just for the sake of the audience is not, is not really aware of mentality, you're talking about mentality.biz. Right. And tell people what mentality.biz is so they can catch up. Oh, man, mentality.biz is a fantastic app, app that um, I developed with the help of some very, very talented uh, technical individuals. Um, it is a brainchild that I brought about to move the mind, not steal the mind. There are some pieces out there that help you meditate, and they use the term mindfulness, and it, it causes you to meditate and steal the mind. And uh, they have mindfulness apps, but this is mentality, mindfulness, or mentality. It's mentality, period. And what it does is the opposite of stealing the mind. It moves the mind, but it moves the whole mind. Hence, the subconscious is incorporated. And what it does is, in, in lieu of stilling the mind, where you have an issue, and you say, okay, I need some calm and peace in my life, and you go in a state of relaxation and stop your mind from thinking about something and just stay still, and you have that sense of peace for a moment. However, when you return from that state of peace, meditative state, whatever, oftentimes whatever the issue was that had caused you to need some peace, it's still there. On the other hand, mentality moves the mind, moves it in through and beyond whatever issues you may have. Those issues, uh, like to describe them as uh, mental locks in which you need mental keys for that exist in our lives. And a lock doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing, such as in the case of a professional who does good in his profession, but the lock stands in the way of him or her doing great. So in this case, we want to enhance an action, not necessarily do away with an action. Shaquille O'Neal with the Los Angeles Lakers was making over a hundred million dollars in his contract. However, you put him on the foul line and he'll miss the shot. So there was a lock there that when addressed, he started making the foul sh the shots from the foul line and it enhanced actually his overall performance in his profession as one of the best basketball players ever. Now to be sure, sometimes the locks could be negative. And in nature, we find keys to unlock a person from those as well. So uh, there was a lady that came, and she wanted to be able to swim with her granddaughter, but she had a fear of water. So in her particular session, we analyzed the initial sensitizing event. Otherwise, the first time this fear of water came about. And it happened when she was about three or four years old and she was from New York, so she was at Coney Island with her mom. And her mom allowed her to go to beach line, to the, to the beach line and allow her to put her feet in the water. And she said, you go there, you put your feet in the water, and when you want to come back to mommy, just turn around and look for the green awning, and mommy will be there. And a little wave came by, but enough to knock the little girl on her bottom. <laughs> with, that, with that, terror set in. And she turned, and she headed for the green awning, and, and by extension, headed for mommy. But when she headed for the green awning, the whole Coney Island had green awnings. And she was lost for two, three hours. Oh, my God. Police, police finally was able to find her mom, who was looking for her as well. And thereby, they got out of there as, soon as, as, as quick as possible. So she didn't want to have anything else to do with any water, green awning, and that which followed. Yeah. Years later, she wanted to be able to swim with her granddaughter. And what happened, the subconscious 
was still protecting that three, four-year-old girl at Coney Island. Unbeknownst to the subconscious that the job that it was doing was imposing something else, it was doing a good job of keeping her going into the water and experiencing any or all of that fear that was experienced before. So that's why the subconscious does a good job, but is the job right or wrong? With neurolinguistic programming and the rest that follows with mentality, you take away that lock and you, just like you take it, a, a, a toy away from a kid, the way to keep that kid from throwing a fit, you give it several new choices. So for that action that was the lock or a blameworthy action that kept her from swimming, we gave her two noteworthy actions to, to, to trade off that part of that subconscious with that were noteworthy, as I said. So perhaps it's like, okay, uh, learn how to swim, you know, eat healthier, be more active, and enjoy the time with your granddaughter. So these are now placed into the subconscious in that space that was left by her detaching and removing the fear of water. Now the subconscious was just protecting the woman. But the woman is no longer, she's a grandmother now, she's no longer three or four. So then once that is put into place, the subconscious has a choice between those four, just like a kid likes choices. You take one toy, you give the kid four other things, those choices will occupy that kid and cause them. What choices did you insert and how did you insert those choices? So hypothetically, the choices, I don't the choices in particular now, but it's like eat healthy, swim with joy, enjoy your teaching your granddaughter how to swim and enjoy water wherever it may be the sound of it the feel of it the sight of it for instance those things are now encoded into the subconscious but how, how do you encode them how is that process okay. done almost how do you insert those choices because you, you just got the one choice and it's fear and we're told to walk away to, you know, run away from fear. By negotiating with that 90% of the mind. So that's the technique that, that's mentality. Have a negotiation. There's a negotiation and it's very, very cutting edge. It's a process in which we or I enter and we meaning me and the person, we enter into a negotiation to barter away that lock in return for the four noteworthy characteristics, the four noteworthy practices that will incorporate, will be incorporated by the whole self and replace that one blameworthy act that we bartered away. Mm -hmm. And that's in the neurolinguistic programming and other techniques uh, is is, is a, a technique about speaking to the part of the sub personality, which is the the subconscious, that uh, harbors that particular practice. So it's a negotiation technique that you know that we offer at mentality, and thereby now the person comes back is swimming. I had a little girl; she was afraid. Uh, she she threw a fit on the plane coming from Atlanta to California to the point where they wanted to bar the mother from getting on the plane with the child. Ultimately, the child was four years old, so here we're talking from grandmom to a little kid now because mentality works for one and all. And the little kid got her once upon a time, there was a little girl session of mentality. And when it was time to go back to Atlanta from California, she started to cry. Her mom put the headphones on so she could hear the session. She heard the session, got on the plane, said, I'm ready to fly, mommy, and went back to Atlanta with no problem. Flew from Atlanta to Pittsburgh several times and back to California, no problem. And then when the little girl was asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? She said, I want to be a pilot. So 
the subconscious is that just nine times nine, nine times stronger than the conscious. And when nine times, it's infinitely it's, stronger. <laughs> I agree with you. And when it's when it's when the right thing is encoded and the subconscious in, is incorporated, you do bring out the best that you can be. Now about that ten percent of the con uh, of the mind that we use called the conscious. Navy SEALs have a term that they call the 40% rule. That being that of that 10%, we only use 40%, which mathematically would only be 4% of the whole mind. And we hope to use more than that. But at 40% of mental power, so says the Navy SEALs, we as uh, average ordinary everyday people feel as though we have exhausted all of our mental capacity. So we're still leaving another 60% out there, up to 10%, another 6%. So imagine out of 100% of the mind, 90% subconscious, 40%, uh, 10% conscious, we're using 40% of the 10% conscious, that's mathematically just 4% of the conscious. We're not really using much of, uh, much of what we have been blessed with. Not at so all. that's why mentality enables us to tap into that 90%, whether you use the whole 90% is one thing. I know somebody used 75% of it, and the, re the results were colossal. But this is the subconscious again. This is the subconscious. So let me, um, let me uh, ask a couple questions here. Um, the subconscious uh, from the research that I've done the majority of my life uh, seems to be really influenced from the outside world, the programming, the media, uh, the environment. Uh, it seems to put the subconscious uh, in a position in which that energy, that untapped energy is not being used for the benefit of the individual. And it's actually being used for the benefit of, you know, society. If you want to say, you know, society is, uh, you know, capitalism and the way economy works and the way I, you know, I feel more satisfied if I spend my money. Um, you know, if I drive my car, I feel like I'm flying, I'm free. It's like we've been, all these things have been rewired for us to consume in order to get these temporary happiness when if we just do what we do with our subconscious, we'll have everlasting happiness. Uh, would you agree to that as far as our subconscious mind is being used for the outside world? The subconscious mind is a repository. Depending on what you put in it, determines if it's best served or if it's best served as something else besides yourself. And that's why we said we negotiate trade off this piece for that uh, a negative experience that is in that repository for four positive uh, acts that could be uh, better the individual. Um, in the process, there are some things that will bring you a lot of joy that are harbored in the subconscious. Think about the best day you ever had in your life, whatever that is. I don't need to know. But whatever that is, in a scale of one to ten, it's probably going to Register as a 10, a 10 or 20, maybe off the, off the scale. Yeah. That is that repository also, which is the subconscious. Now, that will be used to reinforce uh, positive. Oh, your sound went out. Can you hear me? In order to tie into the type of responses that the whole entity, the whole self has. When we work on uh, the trade-offs and what should be in that repository. So it's like this here. Uh, Reginald L. Lewis wrote in his book, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? Uh, Harvard lawyer, the biggest benefactor of the Harvard Law School, and the first African-American billionaire from TLC Beatrice wrote, uh, he died at 50 from brain cancer. He said, I protected all of my assets except my greatest one, which was my mind. He died from brain cancer. Mm. So, um, <laughs> again, 
it's like this. You, 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 you pick what you protect like you pick your fruit. Okay? So if you protect your mind, if you make sure that those things in which you encode, store, to retrieve are noteworthy things, then it doesn't belong to anybody else. And if there are a lot of things in there that shouldn't be in there, there's a, work, there's a way to work those things out and work in the things in which will give you a positive narrative and thereby touching other people the same way and ultimately, which is the goal, have a positive narrative for one and all. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. So um, now mentality.biz, um, it's, it's an online curriculum. What are you doing to, you know, uh, do you have one-on-one uh, -on -one in uh, sessions or, or is this like online course or are you listening? Like what is the actual process to, uh, you know, take that subconscious mind to the next level? Mentality.biz is an app which uh, will have desired sessions on there for individuals. Um, now these sessions, are, is it like, you know, you're talking to them one-on-one -on -one, or is it like some pre-recorded sessions that are tailor-made to certain subjects? Case-specific sessions for what we run into day-to-day -day life from self-improvement, personally and professionally, business enhancement, success strategies, Positive mental attitude, happiness, better health, health, sleep enhancement. Uh, and some of the four big ones that are out there right now, addiction, anxiety, depression, and stress. There you how go. to deal with those things, how to deal with grief. Individuals are out there all by themselves, and this is their veil. So it's an app which addresses all the, most of the things that you'll run into life uh, on a personal basis where you can get in them. And like, again, the mess, the, uh, the methods are clinically proven uh, by uh, certified techniques that come right from all the things we talked about today. And they are very effective uh, for one and all. What happens here? is that that's mentality.biz. That's what you're going to get there. But you're going to also find in days to come that there are master classes. You can have one-on-ones by reaching out of, and the number is 800-318-5922 or going to mentality.biz. There's a section in which you'll be able to email and uh, request one-on-one -on -one sessions. There's also a mentality global roundtable that's going on in different parts of the world where folks get together and deal with that. We're going to extend also to I Am Mentality that works in conjunction with everything mentality offers, including the mentality show which we run. Um, and that deals with issues that folks are having. And we have professionals that come on as guests as well. But the men I Am Mentality will granulate the mentality show and do commentary on a particular part of the shows in order to enable individuals to take a deeper dive if they like what they are hearing. So um, mentality.biz, you just listen to it and it works. 21 days for acquired behavior and please just don't drive while you're listening to it. We have enough highway hypnosis that we're dealing with already. But this is a cutting edge piece to help bring out the best to you that's every one of us. It really does work. And it is something that if it helps one person, if there's good in it and nothing comes from good but good, it can actually have a positive narrative for all of us. And that's the greater goal of it. You know, just listen to it for what you need and be all right with yourself. Then you find that you have the bandwidth to be all right with someone else. So you mentioned positive narrative. Um, um, I, I've done a course uh, called Dreamality, Turn Your Dreams into Reality. And um, I, I remember the day that it, it truly clicked for me. Um, I was having um, um, some definite conflict issues with my son's mother. And uh, it was making uh, me really angry um, and um, frustrated. 
and um, she became like um, the, the 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 direct object to to uh, the desire to inflict my frustrations out on her. Now, I'm not saying I want to do any physical violence or anything like that, but you know how you be like saying, man, she's going to get hers. I can't wait to da-da-da-da. I can't wait to take her to court and get da-da-da. All these things that you're drumming up in your head, right? And so I remember the instructor, he's like telling me that uh, everything is about the ultimate good. Even these negative events and, you know, uh, have an ultimate good. Then we take a little pause and look at me. And I'll be like, why are you looking at me? Then he did it again. You know, and he, he, you know, he made another statement that seemed like it was talking directly to me. And he looked at me again. I go, oh, I know what's going on here. You know, the, the creator's actually talking directly to me through this individual. It's like letting me know that you've got to find um, a wonderful positive to this conflict that you're experiencing. And it's kind of hard to say that there's a positive aspect to the conflict. So either way, switch reels. What I realized is what her goal was, uh, was to bring me closer to my mother so I can resolve some unresolved conflict that I had with my mother. And her behavior forced me into pushing me into basically living with my mother. And I never, you know, I was a 50, oh, 50 year old man living with my mom. And I, I haven't been at home living with my mom since 18 or 19 years old. So anyways, to, to have a, a conclusion without going too long is that without her negative behavior, and I put that in quotes, I wouldn't have been pushed to deal with something that I had basically kept arm's distance or way get out of my, I don't want to process this. And it was to my ultimate good to process it, to understand that I had some family curses that my mother was holding on to. And if I didn't ask those questions, she would have never revealed some things that had taken place to her that was heavily responsible for the relationship that we were having. So once I had that conversation, that little knot that was here, oh my God, it dissipated by like 70 or 80%. So I bring that all up as in you talk about other narratives, how important is it for our subconscious to get that balancing so it has a positive and negative because our whole world works with that energy, right? Absolutely. There's a, the, so in one of the mentality shows, we, uh, ex, we express the, um, the nature of every characteristic of man. Mm. Every That's character- a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did it. We did it at a high level, which means you know we we scratched the surface of it enough so, but uh, enough so to basically uh, get the sweet nectar of of the of, of the uh, principle. Every characteristic of man has a balance has an overabundance and has a deficiency proponent of the balance when you are courageous is the characteristic of anger anger when it's controlled is courage hmm. when it's overabundant it's madness hmm. when it's deficient it's cowardice hmm. uh, Giving, when it's overabundant, is foolhardiness, wastefulness. When it's balanced, is charity. And when it's deficient, it's miserliness. Selfish. Sure, selfishness, miserliness. And with ever, with ever, with every character trait, there's a balance, a deficiency, or overabundance that we can. Uh, find that we hold fast to and the object of the exercise is that balance thereby enabling us to have that positive narrative hmm. that's so well that, said. that, that, also that makes me ponder yeah so what you were talking about like with the with the uh, female um, it called to mind one session that we do have it's called 
ridding yourself of stinking thinking. And it's really, really good. Yeah, it's, I can tell. It's, it's, it's basically, it's basically like a, a drano for the mind. It, it, it flush. It's a flush. You know how we talk about? Oh, we're going to do a cleanse, a seven-day cleanse. How yeah. about a mental cleanse? How about a mental cleanse? Blowing it out a little, blowing it, getting all that nonsense, getting the stinking thinking out of there. You know what I mean? So. You know, I mean, uh, your subconscious doesn't glow with green filth or whatever have you, and there's a way to do that. And so that uh, you incorporate this particular session, which might be about four or five minutes, because we don't have a whole lot of time nowadays. We want it, and we want it right away. So these sessions are case specific for here and now. So once you're able to get rid of the stinking thinking, then that which you embrace works as a prophylactic for your whole self and not allowing anybody to go come in and break your peace. As a matter of fact, when you hear them lashing out, you recognize their pain and how they may need to rid some stinking thinking. You pass that on to them, and that's how we start to change the narrative. Yeah, well, that that's where I'm at with my challenge. Uh, I've been able to understand my thought processes and balance it out and check it. I'm not there 100%, but I'm pretty good. Uh, but when I run into other people and they have their stinking thinking, um, you know, I haven't been too effective at getting them to uh, address their stinking thinking and especially how it affects me. Uh, I deal with a lot of defense. People are on the defense. They like to project and they love to argue. And, you know, me, when I start to get that, I just kind of turn off because I don't want to uh, add fuel to the fire. So I'm really working on my effectiveness. I can address it. I can identify it. But addressing it for change, for my benefit and their benefit, oh, man, that's a work in progress that I'm still working on. Well, I, I, it's just like, not to be repetitive, we have another piece in mentality called happiness is here. So basically, once that's incorporated, first of all, you get rid of stinking thinking, you're open. Now, happiness is here. You're placing that into you. And when an individual sees you and they're going off and want to argue and everything like that, basically, your whole demeanor is like holding up a post that says, happiness is here. And mind, be mindful that oftentimes individuals are crying out for help. That's why you hear all the ugliness coming out of them. They're crying out for help. There's an individual trapped up in there somewhere within all that muck and mire. They're looking for that life. A life which is totally different than what you see on the surface. Yeah, I, I, I can agree with you. <laughs> it's depressed. So, you know, it's like happiness is here. Just by rubbing up against you a little bit, you know, you feel good. You share that good feeling with them. It may not be to the extent in which it knocks out all of the negativity in which they're exhibiting that first time. But it is a taste. And then every time they come around you, if you are if you are holding fast, if that's the badge of honor that you wear, happiness is here, right? Because it's incorporated into your subconscious. Every time they rub up against you, you know, they, you're giving them a fighting chance, man, to be a peaceful person. As I don't sound like an oxymoron, but, you know, if you look at all the negativity that's, that, that goes on in the world a lot of times, you do need some positivity. And once you get a, once you get a taste of it, once you start talking about things that's real positive and that conversation is over and you turn back to the narrative the, 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 the common narrative that's out there and a lot of pockets, you're like, man, you know what? I didn't miss that for a minute. Matter of fact, I forgot it existed. You see? Because the subconscious will enable you to immerse yourself in that positivity, right? And share it with somebody else. If you feel good, you share it with somebody else. I'm going to share that good feeling with you. Hmm. Feel good? Act good, love good, it's real. But it is so much not the narrative that a lot of individuals have the luxury to enjoy today. But you can change it. 
Example, look how all of a sudden you don't hear the common rhetoric in media, person going out, everybody trying to get off this coronavirus right about now. Because people come together when they share a common dislike. So you have a group that shares this common dislike, a group that shares that common dislike, and they dislike each other, go after each other. But everybody shares the common dislike for illness. So you don't hear about anything but a collective now that people have come together to try to shake this thing globally. Okay? Imagine if the common dislike that we have globally is for negativity and we band together and shake it, then we're all bringing out the best we can be toward each other. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is this 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 thing that's going on is a microcosm of what could be the order of the day, the macrocosm of the narrative, that narrative that we speak about for one and all. So, well, so let's get to the number one narrative, and it's the uh, coronavirus. Yes, sir. And we got a lot of fear. Uh, man, I, I know that uh, I've kind of seen a little division within uh, some of my circles uh, sure. about, uh, uh, you know, just staying quarantined in the house uh, for, yes. you know, I, I was supposed to stay quarantined this week. I said, I'm going to go to the beach. I, I want to get one with nature. I want to get away from the, the cell phones, the Wi-Fi, the technology, and it just want to be me, the sand, and the ocean. Uh, that's my comfort. That's my security. That's my that's my peace blanket, uh, so to speak. And, uh, you know, uh, I got called and said that I don't have, what was the exact terms? I am defined by my inflexibility to new ideas. Well, oftentimes people do fight new knowledge with old knowledge, okay? Find themselves in conflict. I don't know if that's the case for you in particular, uh, but uh, everyone loves the pursuit of happiness, okay? That's what makes you happy. Uh, another consideration is about fear. Fear doesn't make you happy. Well, fear makes cowards of us all, it's been said. And also, um, there was a cartoon... I saw a long time ago. It was a guy peeking over a wall, just his eyes and his nose. And uh, he had the look of fear. And the caption read, just because you're paranoid don't mean they're not going to get you. Okay? So why fear? Whatever's going to come about. Uh, I think that knowledge is a better alternative than fearfulness. And when we know better, we do better. And when we do better, we're not afraid. So it's about getting that right information and being able to um, get into and beyond what we're into now. Uh, on the Mentality Show, we have Dr. Daniel Derivier. He's um, Chief Medical Officer for our companies, um, the Docs Around the Clock Mental and Mentality, as well as Dole Package Energy Shot. And he is breaking it down this week. Um, we'll have another show today sometime about the characteristic of this virus, or what this protein feeds off of, what it cannot do, what it can do, the myths and the realities of it, its sequence. Uh, we were talking earlier about how long it can live. So that's its sequence. And um, I think that is, it would behoove me just to Defer that to Dr. Daniel Derivier, a medical doctor that really has a very, very good grasp of the coronavirus and, and, and implore people to listen to the show. He'll be on tonight, six, six o'clock. Where? Uh, six o'clock um, Eastern, three o'clock Pacific. On, on, on uh, mentality.biz or where can they find it? Um, it'll be the mentality show on myradiofm.com, uh, but we'll we'll continue. We'll, you'll find it on mentality on the mentality app. I'll be posting it on the mentality app uh, tomorrow, and it'll so be the the mentality the app. You're constantly uh, it, it's a membership. 
you've got all these categories and then you're feeding it with uh, updated interviews and excellent information by experts. Is that basically the gist of it? Yes. So we have the free content membership is free and that free content includes, includes over close to close to 1500 minutes of content. That's for free. That's wow. about half of, that's more than half of the whole content of some apps out there that you pay for. And then there's a pay component with the sessions that help address addiction, anxiety, sleep, better health, and things like that. Some of them are free, some of them are for pay. But for free, you could you could listen for a whole week for free, uh, a, a whole week in and out, like for a whole year, because we're always adding the shows for free, which has really, really great information. Uh, most of the shows, uh, there's a natural well-being session, which helps you be well, uh, the same uh, as the same sessions that you pay for that we give for free, because it's not all about the money. And if you choose to uh, subscribe to the premium, it's nine ninety nine on uh, App Store and ten ninety nine on Google Play for Android. Well, for the most part, there's enough free content. Just download it and scroll to the mentality show, and you'll have twenty four shows, and each one about fifty five minutes long. And Dr. Daniel Derivier is on show number twenty four and number twenty two with the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, man. So uh, let's get back to how I did uh, uh, meet you, which was to Total Package Energy. Uh, as you can see, sometimes my eyes get into this kind of like a dreamy mode here. I can use yes. a shot right now. <laughs> oh, yes. wait a minute. Hold up. Yes. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, I love this product here um, because... Uh, I know that I I don't like that 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 kind of um, getting on the edge with the uh, remember the monster drinks or the energy yeah. drinks that they used to promote you know yeah. and have you all wired up and then you have you come down I don't yeah. like that feeling um, and it's temporary then it becomes addicting and the more you need more just to get the same energy it, it's a never ending battle what I found interesting with this product here is the energy, but it, it doesn't tense the body up. It almost opens the capillaries up. I Like I said earlier, I get more efficient breathing and I concentrate a lot on breathing. So I breathe yeah. better with this. Why do I breathe better with this product? Um, this product is made in a pharmaceutical laboratory as opposed to a food processor plant in that where the other products are made. This product has one third of the active uh, caffeine ingredient that the other products have. A study by Dr. Patrick Jacobs, the University of Miami, has found that the combination of the natural ingredients with inside this product does not raise your heart rate. So that's one reason you be, breathe better. And also that this product has five B vitamins in it. And everything that goes in here is FDA inspected because it's coming through an FDA registered and inspected laboratory. The end product being a supplement does not have to have FDA on it because supplements don't need FDA certified on there. But it answers to a higher level of compliance, which is the FDA standards. So you're getting a product that comes out of a very, very well-controlled place. It's uh, brought together by food chemists, and it's been taken through very, very stringent tests by doctors that have approved it. If you're going to use a, an energy shot, another doctor is Dr. A.J. Akawala, Yale-trained cardiologist, board certified in uh, New York. He has his own clinic, and he runs five hospitals in New Jersey. Uh, as well as Dr. Daniel Derivier, who is the public health administrator for Total Package Energy Shot Company, who backs this and makes sure his fingers are on the pulse figuratively to make sure that everything that's happening with Total Package is up to snuff. Professional athletes, NBA, NFL, WNBA, use this product, and there's no dirties in it. No dirties? No stamina sustainer, antioxidant, with vitamins and minerals, 
no rush, no jitters, no crash, no sugars, no carbs, no compromise.